Mask collecting is undeniably a defining feature of Majora's Mask. There are so many different types for the player to find during their adventure. This includes Happy Masks, which give Link an ability or open access to a physical reward, and Transformation Masks, that allow Link to take on a new form entirely. But what I'm talking about today is different from those two types, and is not typically analyzed, especially not for a countdown list like this. As evidenced by the title of this video though, the masks I will be discussing are non-transformable and non-happy. They're simply masks throughout the land of Termina that have story or decorative purposes, and are not able to be used by Link at all. Some examples would be the masks that are hanging on the walls of the Stockpot Inn. We see these a lot, all over the place in the various shops of Clocktown, but Link will never be able to wear them. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at this topic, so I've compiled a ranked list of what I feel are the best, non-wearable masks of them all. With all this stated, let's get started with number 5. Taking the 5th spot on my list is a mask located on the Happy Mask Salesman's backpack. It is the same face that makes its appearance as Link's mirror shield, which serves as a permanent replacement for the Hylian shield later in the game. I'm intrigued as to what this face is and the origin behind it. Since it's a recurring symbol, I'd like to know who it's resembling or why that particular emotion is so prominent. It's enjoyably disturbing. It's a face seemingly in agony and shock which invokes my curiosity. Since it's found in the land of the dead, Icona Canyon, is this a poor soul of unrest that inhabits previously inanimate objects to show its distress? Using the fact that all standard and big pole souls revealed after defeating the ghost all look the same, and the understanding that every race of each enemy in the game is identical with the occasional color swap, it's not a far stretch to imagine that all members of whatever race of enemy this was had the same face. I can only imagine the origin behind why these objects came to be, and I find the potential correlation between them very interesting. I want to be able to wear this mask in order to find out more, so it takes my number 5 spot on this list. Next up is the Mario mask, also located on the backpack of the Happy Mask Salesman. I really hope that this is a mask resembling Mario, a Happy Mask, and not a Mario Transformation mask. This would mean that at one point Mario's soul was in need of healing, and it forever resides in the mask. Is this the fate of poor Mario? He deserves better than that for always rescuing the princess, with no expectations in return besides the occasional kiss on the cheek and freshly baked cake. Why Mario? Why did this happen to you? If it was an officially wearable happy mask however, and it gave Link the ability to jump, that'd be pretty sweet to use. The Sun Mask makes its way to number 3 on my list. Why? Getting this stolen ceremonial wedding mask back to its rightful owner is essential in reuniting the two lovers of the Cavian Andrew Quest, as marital tradition in Clocktown sees the groom presenting this mask counterpart in front of his bride-to-be. While the couple's mask is a fusion of both the Sun and Moon Mask, the Moon Mask being the bride's equivalent to the exchange, it's not nearly as satisfying as it could be after completion of the quest, yielding only one single heart piece. Had Link been able to acquire this mask separately, it could have been used as a setup for funny dialogue, seeing as its possession suggests that the wearer is engaged. Since the Sun Mask is to be handmade in preparation for a wedding, it would be very humorous to have Link either wear it around Clocktown and get congratulatory praise for thinking the boy is getting married, or to be shown off to characters in search for a potential suitor, as they would think that Link is proposing to them at that moment. Imagine the possibilities! It'd be cute getting reactions from certain NPCs, like having Link talk to Romani at the ranch, made even funnier if spoken to her sister immediately after. It'd also be interesting in talking with the adults of Clocktown, either believing Link isn't old enough to understand what he's doing by wearing the mask in front of them, laughing it off, or having one creeper in the town be actually interested. Take that back, Link is supposed to be around 10 years old in the game. He could be older with Romani's mask though. Never mind, bleach for the eyes. In honesty though, disregarding obvious shipping jokes, this would be really unique and get a lot more use and entertainment out of a mask that ultimately becomes something uninteresting and somewhat unrewarding for a gift granted by arguably the most difficult quest in the game. For the second mask on this list, I have the potentially cooler Giant's Mask, as shown in Granny's story about the origin of the Carnival of Time as seen here. This kid is wearing it. As stated in an older video of mine discussing which of the transformation masks is objectively the best, 
it would make the giant form Link takes on to another level, actually taking the shape of one of the four Termidian Guardians. Having a mask that looks like this is exactly what I'd like to see, and a suitable replacement for an otherwise mediocrely satisfying mask. I'd love to actually transform into a new shape, rather than simply grow in size and kick some worm tail with how an actual giant is depicted in the game with the new moveset from the 3DS remaster. That would be pretty awesome and ultimately end the confusion, or at least my curiosity, on whether or not the giant's mask should be considered a happy or transformation mask. Honorable mention goes to the boss remains. There are detrimental story elements before the final battle between Link and Majora, adding to the already surreal environment that is the inside of the moon. They are worn by each moon child, which mysteriously resemble physical properties of the Happy Mask Salesman, as evidenced by their apparent need for Link to sacrifice his own collection to fully complete each dungeon trial. There are so many new questions these kids pose, such as the reason why they are wearing the masks of defeated bosses corrupted by Majora, and the oddity of the questions directed at Link when completing their quests. The Moon Children add a new level of philosophy to the story by questioning things such as the meaning of happiness and who your character truly is. It's unnerving and terrifyingly deep for a game intended for a broader audience, and that's why I love it so much. Even though they can't be worn, it's satisfying collecting all of these masks after defeating a boss, rather than just simply being them and moving on. It's a reminder of the battles the player overcame, and gives meaning and purpose in trying to free each giant from the power these masks contain. There's also the fact that they add depth to the final battle against Majora's Mask, serving as counter enemies to an already engaging battle, forcing the player to switch up tactics and reevaluate priority. This will probably come to the surprise of no one, as it is most commonly imagined, but taking the number one spot is none other than Majora's Mask itself. How cool would it be, in addition to the Fierce Deity's Mask, to wear Majora's Mask as a bonus? If anything, it'd be nice to be able to wear it for aesthetic purposes only. I want this thing in my inventory. Link defeated the evil inside the mask, although he did fairly promise the Happy Mask salesman he'd get it to him in exchange for turning him back into a human but it'd just be a nice gift for the player. If it did have usable power, and Link didn't eradicate the evil from the mask, it'd be interesting to be able to use dark magic against enemies, perhaps involving melee combos like Goron Link, using a dark aura akin to Ganondorf's attacks in the Super Smash Bros. series, or maybe your B button would be replaced like the Blast Mask, and when pressed would automatically initiate Link to let out a scream like the skull could atop the clock tower and bring the moon down even faster. This would result in you initiating the sweet ending apocalypse scene without having to wait the timer out. These are all ideas and many more can be stemmed from the possibility. How would you like to see a wearable Majora's Mask used in the game as an end reward for collecting everything? Would it take away from the mystery that is Majora? I'm not sure and while these masks would all be interesting to see utilized as equipable items in the game, I wouldn't change anything about this title because the end product is a thing of perfection I simply wouldn't mess with. This is my favorite game of all time, and I feel changes need not be necessary, as entertaining as it is to imagine. <laughs>